there are so many diets out there everyone trying to kind of etch their mark whether it's carnivore vegan paleo atkins keto too many popular diets to name you could not list all of them however i'm ranking my top three popular diets and what i mean by that is not like the three most popular diets i mean like out of the most popular diets the best three and this is from an overall longevity and health perspective and, and some other factors here and there but i will say these three diets we're going over none of them are the actual solution and maybe we'll come up with like my own new thing and have some sort of outline meal plan i will say some of them come a little close though uh, we're starting with the mediterranean diet and out of any diet it really has the most proven track record it's based on the eating habits of people near the mediterranean sea and it was initially created in the 1960s drawing inspiration from greece italy france and spain and in each of those countries the food quality is so high it's excellent they're eating whole natural foods for the most part especially compared to america and the uk so the basis of the diet is those whole foods meat fish eggs whole grains vegetables fruits nuts seeds healthy fats like the olive oil and the nuts according to the conventional wisdom and they avoid processed foods sugar soft drinks dairy products vegetable oils and margarine so it's very very natural it removes a lot of the negative things the problems that are causing inflammation in most people's diets so the overall pros of the mediterranean diet is as we mentioned earlier it's like proven these people live very long healthy lives i think italians on average are you know the oldest living people like some places 100 years old is pretty normal and you can't say that about any other diet for the most part um, there's a lot of blue zones that are mediterranean diets and it, it really encourages a balanced ratio of whole foods so if all those other lifestyle factors are correct you know you're in a low radiation environment you're out in nature you're exercising you're getting a lot of sun if you were following a high quality mediterranean diet you don't really have to think of much else the problem is it doesn't mention the food quality going organic which in a lot of these places doesn't matter because they're growing the food naturally so it doesn't really apply but if you try to follow a mediterranean diet in america with these foods the american version you might actually get sick because of how much crap and pesticides and herbicides agrochemicals they spray on the food and it's not really strict enough in some circumstances like me when i had really bad liver damage or poor health maybe people with crohn's disease ibs SIBO, candida there are some more severe health issues that this diet would not be able to fix but i guess that can kind of be said about most diets maybe we'll rank these at the end after i think about it a little more uh, but next up we're going to talk about the vertical diet um, I think it was created by Stan Efferding, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I saw him on TikTok yesterday, and not to be rude, but you know, the guy's like older. He's been using a lot of performance enhancing drugs his whole life. He looked like you know, he was about to pop, like he was red and you know, huge. Uh, so he's not necessarily the embodiment of health and longevity, but there are some aspects of this diet that are pretty minimally inflammatory. And uh, this is the quote from their website. The vertical diet is a way of eating designed to help athletes who are engaged in high intensity activities consume a large number of calories they need to gain weight, increase muscle mass and strength, and maximize workouts. It has recently been promoted as a weight loss regimen with followers including Camille LeBlanc, CrossFit champion and former fittest woman on the planet, Half Thor Bjornsson who played the mountain on Game of Thrones, and Lane Johnson, offensive lineman for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think we actually uh, did a few day of eating reviews where people were following the vertical diet. So I've definitely had my input here and there on this before. And I'm probably gonna echo that, although that was a while ago, so most of you guys might not have seen it. The central premise of the diet is to eat nutrient-dense foods that the body likes, foods that are easily digestible and don't aggravate the digestive system. 
The thought is that sometimes foods just pass through the body and leave as waste. Eating foods that your body prefers, according to the vertical diet, will help you absorb the nutrients you're eating. Now, I haven't like purchased the vertical diet book. I haven't gone into all the specific details of it, but I have a general idea of what it is. The base of the diet is beef and white rice, which I'm definitely a fan of. It's very safe and most people without too many health issues are gonna feel really good eating that. You're also allowed to have certain fruits, certain vegetables, eggs, and dairy. What you're not allowed to have is a lot of whole grains and a lot of very, very specific foods in the FODMAPS category that are considered inflammatory. Uh, overall, a vertical diet that I've seen done certain ways where people are having like beef and rice is not that bad. The main downside is it's lacking the fiber, the whole grains, the gut motility that you need to continuously detox the liver. And although he has like a specific list of foods to avoid and vegetables and fruits to avoid, I don't know what it's based off of. It didn't seem too accurate to me from an anti-nutrient perspective, so it didn't really make much sense. And the real thing that I didn't like was the diet includes eggs and dairy. Like how can you talk about you know, being minimally inflammatory, ease of digestion, duh, 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 but have eggs and dairy in the diet. And again, I didn't read the whole vertical diet book. Maybe it says something in there to avoid foods that you don't tolerate, but then you could say that about any diet. The point of having like a written dietary regimen and coining it something is that you kind of have a list of rules to follow, not just, oh, eat how you feel. So overall, the vertical diet uh, is good in a sense that you know having a base of beef and white rice is excellent but just like the other diets they don't mention the food quality and that going organic and what country you live in is pretty important uh, to remove a lot of the negatives that are used now when we grow our foods last but not least is the potato diet and a while ago probably like five six years ago at least I saw a video of Penn and Teller famous uh, magicians and one of them was following the potato diet and had a lot of success on it. And at face value, you think this is kind of crazy. And if you don't know what the potato diet is, it's a short-term rapid weight loss solution. Potatoes are the primary source of calories on this diet. Potatoes are an excellent source of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. And proponents of the potato diet believe that you can lose about a pound per week. There are many variations of the potato diet, but in its most simple form, followers eat nothing but plain potatoes for several days. Since the diet is restrictive, it's not meant to be followed long term. Uh, so as you can imagine, you're allowed to eat potatoes and you're not allowed to eat anything else. Uh, the issue with this is it's not specific enough. So most people do the correct thing, like russet or Idaho plain white flesh potatoes, which I think uh, are excellent, excellent, excellent. But you know, are they peeling them? How are they cooking them? What are they adding to them? I mean, the problem is someone might just start doing like white sweet potatoes or uh, choose like a type of potato that has a really high solanine or specific anti-nutrient content or they're not cooking them properly. This can go really wrong really quick. But in terms of detox, only eating like peeled organic white russet potatoes might be the literal fastest way to detox your liver. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Because when you remove the protein and the fat from the diet temporarily, you're really just putting a lot of starch in there and like pulling and soaking all the toxins out. So uh, it's one of those weird things where it might not be a bad idea to try it for a day or two but realistically there's no reason to not have a small amount of animal protein in the diet you can't really argue against that as much of a complete food as potatoes are you know you don't have to worry about like adding fiber like you do with white rice you don't have to worry about arsenic the nutrient mineral content is very very high it's an excellent source of electrolytes potatoes are so complete and you know, there's nothing else inflammatory in the diet because you're not eating anything else. So I think it's really interesting that uh, a very niche diet like that 
ends up actually being so good uh, for your liver detox and liver health if, uh, if you do it in a very specific way, which actually lines up with the way that most people generally do it. And I think uh, in that Penn and Teller video, he, he said he did really well on the diet um, and he lost a lot of weight and he felt a lot better. Uh, so if anyone coming from a standard American diet follows any of these diets, they're going to feel a lot better. Uh, in, in terms of health improvements from like a time perspective, I mean, the potato diet is going to be like the most significant difference in how you feel then maybe the vertical diet and then probably the Mediterranean diet. If all of these diets were done with the highest quality ingredients and you critiqued a few things here and there, I think the Mediterranean diet would probably be near the top, uh, followed by the vertical diet, followed by the potato diet. But as is face value, the diets, you know, as they are, potato, vertical, Mediterranean, I think. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I really did think about the other stuff. Like, is paleo, should that be on the list? Should keto be on the list? Should Atkins? This was after going through all of the diets that are, are kind of common and that people have probably heard about. So maybe this gives you guys some ideas to improve your own health. And you know, when, when you look at these things and you experiment yourself and you're involved with diet and nutrition for a pretty long time, uh, that's how you kind of get a really good understanding of what you should actually be eating. And hopefully I can continue to provide you guys with high quality health information. And uh, maybe eventually we'll do a book on a new diet. But for now, we just have some day of eatings and you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm currently doing. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you guys can go to frank stefanocom to support me through all of my businesses. We have sales on pretty much everything, guys. Everything's discounted on every single website. And we're going to have those sales for at least through the holidays, probably about a month, a month and a half. So uh, definitely get a few things if you guys have been wanting to try them for a while. I'll see you guys for the next video.